So thank you, Jesus. And um, I did a little happy birthday thing, but I didn't I didn't hit record. So uh, happy birthday, build the farm. It's his birthday. Uh, probably won't be with us. I think he's got a big family shindig today. So, but just wanted to say God bless you on your birthday. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your beautiful blood. Thank you, Jesus. See, all these little problems and things that don't seem to go our way just fail in distractive properties next to your beautiful blood. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us, for your promises, your truth, all that you are. We thank you, Jesus. We just invite in the Holy Spirit this day to come and worship the Lord. Just sit there. I feel it entering in right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are welcome in this place. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus, where two or more are gathered in your name, that you are in our midst. So we welcome you, we praise you, and we honor you this day, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's get started in this thing. Well, I have a praise report, and I wrote myself a note to remember to add it to my list, but I didn't get around to getting the information to throw it on there, so I'll try to do what it was from memory. Um, but a few days ago, a sister said that she had, um, she had to get a tooth extracted Monday and had been an awful, terrible pain, and then... Uh, here a blister had formed over it and it was just excruciating so she was just like begging oh I need, I need prayer please and so I started praying and stuff and then uh, a little bit later uh, she said something to the effect of I don't know what you're doing but keep doing it the pain is gone so that feels good <laughs> praise God um, so, uh, we just, um, as a community here, we just uh, speak to her tooth and, and all of that. And it, if there's any trauma dealing with this pain and stuff, we just speak to that. We bind up trauma. We bind up pain in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for, for judgment. We speak life to her gums there, life to her bone structure and everything there, her gum line. We speak healing and restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. No pain. And complete healing in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Okay. Um, okay, and um, James's um, granddaughter, London. Um, I think I was praying for her the same day. I just I had this day, and I want to share with everybody. It was really. It was really. Um, it was like a hush. I was driving to pick up my son from football practice, and it's getting dark. And as I'm going, like all the farmers around here, they're harvesting beans and they're harvesting corn. And as I'm going, they have their lights on, and there's trucks everywhere, and there's chaff flying and dust flying. And it's just such a dramatic thing. Um, it's like I was in a time warp. And so the the prayer that I was doing, you know, it's just like harvest time. It was such a mental thing, you know. And so when I was praying, it was just really awesome time. And so I was praying for James's granddaughter, London. 
and when I was praying, um, yeah, it was kind of more of the same. Um, I think last on the last broadcast, I was I kept being drawn to pray for the tubing, and I was praying for that again. It's like, um, you know how they put a stint in an artery or something to open it. For some reason, I just kept seeing a collapsed tube. It just didn't want to stay open. And so it was like I was asked, you know, agreeing with the Holy Spirit for like a stint in there to keep it round and circular so that everything could flow. And uh, James was able to give me like a little um, praise report. And he got an update and it seemed like that was kind of like what it was about. And so uh, things are moving in the right direction uh, with healing for her. Um, I guess she didn't need uh, extra surgery and stuff. So that's kind of cool how the Lord kind of sh was showing me that vision. And then, you know, James was confirming that's kind of what was going on. Not necessarily a stint, but, um, you know, that same kind of concept. So praise God for that. Okay. What, I want to say a prayer for Kamisha. She is seeking and needs to receive. And she stressed, it's not that she wants, she realizes she needs uh, to receive. And the, the video that it was, was on was um, about speaking in tongues. So... Um, you know, beyond baptism and the Holy Spirit, she's realizing that she needs that that uh, God-directed prayer language. So, you know, she's pressing on and believing for the gifting. So, uh, we will just pray for Kamisha. For a release. That she enter in, that she enter in, and that the overflow of that worship and love for you, Lord Jesus, will come through that tongue. We pray that release. We bind up fear any intimidation, any, any uh, negative things spoken about tongues that she might have heard. We command those down now in the name of Jesus. For your word stands forever, Lord Jesus, and you promise uh, these things. And you show us through the scripture as it was in the beginning. In the beginning they spoke in tongues. And so we just agree with that desire within her and that she knows she wants you to take control, Lord Jesus, and direct her prayer into the, uh, the perfect prayer. So we just agree for that gifting to flow. Brenda can touch that coal to her lips, Lord Jesus. No fear, no fear. Freedom in you, Lord Jesus. Freedom in you to flow in you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Okay, and I also have... Um, a request. Um, she had mentioned that she she has a touch of the agoraphobia, um, even a touch of it. We don't we don't want even a little bit of pollution uh, of something when God promises us abundant life. So we're just going to agree for uh, that fear of being in like alone in an open space or with people around um, that whole agoraphobia thing we just agree that 
that be bound in the mighty name of Jesus. Fear and anxiety, we bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm hearing um, soul ties. Maybe there's a family member or someone that um, perhaps Kamisha that um, that suffers from this, maybe even to a greater degree than you. Um, just agree. Uh, we break that in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare your freedom of no from fear and from anxiety. We bind those things and we place them beneath the footstool of Jesus Christ. We cut all the any soul ties that may have uh, access to um, keep that around. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we declare freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless my sister, Lord Jesus. Bless her hunger for you, Lord Jesus. Fill up her cup and activate her into her giftings, into her calling. Give her that purpose that wonderful calling for her life that she knows that she knows what she is to do how she is to walk to refine into uh, your bride in Jesus name we pray amen okay okay um, uh, Iris uh, which is Andy's aunt uh, she had collapsed due to an infection. And so, um, you know, it was a little ah at first because didn't know what, what, what all happened. But uh, there is a blessing. She does have access it within the home for other, you know, like, uh, what is that? One of those stair elevator things or whatever. So that's really awesome, but um, she injured her right ankle, or her right ankle, <laughs> her leg, and her hip in the fall. So those are the things we want to speak to. Speak to the blood. We thank you, Jesus. We call upon your precious blood to increase within her, Lord Jesus, that all those blood cells can go and feed those injured areas for a speedy recovery. We speak strength to that ankle. We speak strength to all the tendons, the ligaments, everything. No tears in the mighty name of Jesus. Bruising, we command you to go in the mighty name of Jesus. As those blood, as that blood flows, as that blood flows. And we also speak healing to that hip. We thank you. We thank you for the master's touch. Touching that hip right now. In the name of Jesus. We speak lubrication to that hip. Speak to all the muscles surrounding that area. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I also thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, Andy's ability to witness and to pray over her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just agree with him and in all of his prayers that he's able to pray over her for the manifestation of your healing power. 
Brown that the sheik on our can ever write it that I see but I will know back it. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we are going to pray for Eric, who had a heart attack. Um, there was an angiogram. I don't really know what an angiogram is. Um, I thought that was like a, it's not like an X-ray, but it's actually a procedure. I've never heard of what that is before, so that's that's an interesting one. Um, but anyhow, uh, it didn't work, so he needs a bypass, bypass surgery. So we just speak blessing over Eric. We speak life. We speak life around his heart. Abundant life, Lord Jesus. And comfort, Lord Jesus. Comfort, Lord Jesus, and strength. We command the heart rate to level out and be steady in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to calm down and go at the normal rate in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak life into you. I speak that resurrection life into you. I see Jesus' hand wrapping around that heart. And I don't know. But I'll agree for a new heart. I agree that he's um, placing a new heart in there. Grant him that peace, Lord Jesus, and his family as well. Peace, peace, abundant peace. For all things work to the good of those that love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your servants. Thank you, Jesus, that just draws him and his family nearer and dearer to you, Lord Jesus. Okay, an angiogram, if it works, they do an angioplasty. Okay, but it was blocked. Okay. We agree with Jesus' hand wrapped around there. Mm. Praise you, Jesus. When I was praying, I could like see him laying in bed and just breathing faster. That's why I was um, asking, uh, you know, commanding the, the level to level out. It just seemed like, you know, if you're breathing faster, it's like your heart's racing or something. So, I was that. That's what I was seeing. You can always confirm and let me know if I, if uh, if that was on or not. Um, but uh, yeah, let's keep praying for him throughout the week. Okay. Um, I want to pray for Becky, who's a young believer. Um, for more faith, and indeed we do bind guilt from her. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for true revelation of what you did. Thank you for your holy word, Lord Jesus. Your holy, holy word. That you wipe it away. And that it is a daily process. Each and every day we have to choose life that we might live. And we choose life by when that, when temptations, struggles, whenever happen, we lay the carnal man aside and choose you, Lord Jesus. And even when we fail, 
we repent and start again. So I thank you for Becky. I would just ask Lord Jesus that you would just give her that revelation, that deep revelation of, of your deep love. And yes, we command guilt go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. Give her that perfect contentment in you, Lord Jesus. Fill her up with your joy and your peace. Anything that is exalted and lifted up high within her mindset, that those things will be brought down low. Any thoughts that exalt themselves above your truth, Lord Jesus, that they be brought low so that she can accept, receive her forgiveness, and move on. That it not be greater than what you did for her. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, and Andy says, I think he is more nervous than he lets on regarding uh, Eric and his heart. So, you know, maybe it's that. Um, but yeah, I just saw him going... <laughs> Yeah, just <laughs> okay. Um, we want to pray for Caroline, who has nerve damage in her leg and back pain caused from a few years ago uh, from a drunken person. And I don't know, you know, the details of what that is, but I want to share a story because I had a run in with a drunken person before too. Uh, I don't know how many years ago, but, uh, you know, coming home from the store, minding my own business, and all of a sudden from behind, you know, I'm, I'm driving like 35 miles an hour, maybe 30, because I pulled out, and I don't know if I could get up to speed that fast, but anyhow, from behind, I am plowed into uh, from a truck from behind. And it's, you know, immediately it's this, oh my gosh, what just happened? You know, it's like all of a sudden I'm pushed forward and it's like, ah. And so I pull off of the road and uh, there were two guys that happened to be like at a bus stop or something. And then everything just started happening fast. Um, the guy, I mean, you could tell he was drunk. But he looked like, a, like he had just come off of a construction job or something I don't know but the gist of it was is I think in his drunken stupor he was having a moment of road rage and there was somebody that was in front of him that was ticking him off and I think what happened was is they pulled off and he didn't pay attention he's just going like this and then he just decides to floor it. And, uh, and he ran into me. Well, anyhow, it's interesting because the guy, um, one of the guys that was at the bus stop, he was, uh, you know, he was out of, out of uh, high school, but he was younger. Here, he was going to go into the academy because he wanted to be a police officer. So he was all interested in this whole scenario, which was very comforting for me because I was very, you know, concerned. You know, I, I just, I'd never have to deal with this because the guy didn't have insurance. And so it was like, oh my gosh, what, what on earth is going to happen? And this guy's drunk and, you know, the police aren't getting there too fast and whatever. And so anyhow... I ended up having to go into uh, to court, and it was nice because this kid, um, he, he decided he volunteered as a witness, which was great for him because it's good experience for him, but he would go with me. Well, of course, the one court date I go to, nobody's there. Uh, he didn't show. Nobody told us. And so it's like there's this stress of, you know, 
being scared because you got to go into town in this big building you never been there before you got to park and it takes like a whole day because I went I picked up this guy and we went down there and it's like uh well then it got rescheduled so we had to do it again and so we did all this again but during the time of all this inconvenience and stuff and whatnot um it was cool because God God works. It, it doesn't matter if um, drunk driver or whatever, but God is working, and it was really cool because um, I played uh, a Christian radio station that was more like uh, like rock and roll type of Christian music uh, for that local town back then, and. Uh, you know, it opened the door for me to have conversation with this guy and also to encourage him in his police officer kind of thing and ask him questions and just kind of just be kind and support him and whatnot. So there was a lot of good fruit out of that. The other thing that happened was I, I found this out was that um, this this whole thing was just nothing but a big setup. This guy had the like a a bond or some kind of insurance or whatever because he'd been drunk before. He had like the cheapest thing that you could possibly get and he was trying to get out of it. And so I think they figure if oh, you know, they set everything up and then it in and, and then it falls through that I would give up. And so this was training for me because being in an uncomfortable thing and whatnot, I had to press on and know that I had to do the right thing by helping to do whatever I could so that this guy would not get away with it. Because, you know, I don't know how much he could get away with it, but by my showing up and everything, uh he got it harder and it was really cool because um, I got to speak and, and explain the whole situation of the things that the man said to me um, you know he was like saying well, why did you do this and that and that's what how I understood that I was like unintentional road rage and so after I shared that um, I didn't actually end up having to go into court that second time they ended up settling out, but like I said, it was just all one big strung out thing. And if I wouldn't have showed up, uh, he would have got away with more. So why am I sharing this? Because um, there is all this, um, you know, you got pain involved. You got, uh, you messed up my life. Uh, I got things to do and, you know, I'm pushed into this arena where I don't feel comfortable and I'm scared and, and, and all these things. So, you know, there's forgiveness. I mean, it's really deep when you get to thinking about it. Um, but at the same time, it's like, what are all the things that God did during that? Uh... It was a test in my tenacity, and it, it's an awesome thing because I didn't want to do any of this. I didn't, but I saw the blessing, and wow, the Lord provided me with this guy that was going to go with me, and he doesn't really know. I mean, he knows a little bit more than me, but it was nice that I had somebody to go with, but I got to witness to him, and all these great things happened along the way. So, um, there's just, there's a lot of things that happens within an accident. So, um, obviously, I just want to talk about, um, okay, the damage is nerve damage in the leg and back pain. So, Lord Jesus, we just forgive this drunken man. We forgive him, Lord Jesus, for he knows not what he does or what he did at that time. 
We, we bind up pain and the trauma from the incident in the mighty name of Jesus. We command that go to the footstool of Jesus Christ. For all things work to the good of those that love you. And we speak, speak restoration and life. We speak to those nerves. We command you to come in alignment with the word of God. For trauma, pain has no place in this body any longer. Back, we command you to be healed completely and fully. And just, just like uh, Joan Hunter talks about speaking to the cellular memory. Uh, within a, a person, you know, when they go through an event that is somewhat traumatic, we speak to the cellular memory on that back and in the leg, and we command you to go away, to go to the footstool of Jesus Christ. We erase that cellular memory in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus, pour your oil, your healing balm down upon Caroline in restoration. Give her that joy. And we pray for that drunken man. We set him free from any judgments. We place him in the arms of Jesus. Amen. So, when those, when there's those bad things, you know, I, I really like to look back through, you know, I've been through some crazy stuff in my life. But it's like, I'm always looking, looking for God. I'm looking for, what were you doing there? What were you doing there? And, I, and, you know, now I can always see Him. I can see Him building me up, building my confidence, my faith, stretching me. Everything is so awesome. So, praise God. Okay, um, I gotta look this up here. Um, I got sent a video to watch um, this week. Okay. And it was regarding, um, I just forgot his name. Kenny, I can't remember. He was on Sid Roth once, though, because I remember hearing the testimony before. But uh, the listener or the, the person that wrote in was asking, you know, he was just marveling of how, how he can hear, how, how the Kenny could hear the Lord speaking to him and know with such conviction of what to do. And even one of the things was the Lord told him to you know, go here and do this and, you know, whatever, and you will meet your wife. I mean, that is really, that is some really big time faith stuff. And that, that goes along with his giftings. You know, uh, faith is a gift. Um, it's a thing to have, but it's, it's also like a, a special thing too. Um, so, um, you know, It's so anyhow. Um, he was talking about did did you ever ask the Lord to reveal Himself to you? Because He wants to hear the the Lord's voice more clearly. Um, you know, sometimes it's kind of like, uh, is that my conscience or you know? And and we all we all do this at times um, because. 
God just gives us just enough for us to latch on. And sometimes we're not paying attention and we miss that. So we have to um, ask again. But um, what's pretty amazing this week um, is before I read his email even, I was reading in Matthew 11. And I, you know, I was reading the whole chapter, but there was a part I read over a few times. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. And what do we know, that was uh, Matthew eleven twenty-seven. 27, we are to ask. And so I was really, wow, you, you know, I asked this, you know, did you ask the Lord to reveal himself to you? And then I, I read this during the week unbeknownst to what, you know, uh, was written to me. And yes, I did. <laughs> right after I read that, like, I don't know, four times in a row, I just kept reading it slower and slower and just marveling at, wow, Jesus can show me the Father. Well, of course I have to ask him. Show me the Father. He he hears me. He delights to give me a fish and not a rock. So I I lifted up a prayer and I said, Jesus, oh please show me the Father. And so uh, I shared uh, because I feel like there's you know I was sharing with a, a friend Nick this week that I really feel that something has shifted in the heavenlies. Um, uh, Nick uh, shared with me a uh, testimony of reading the Word and essentially getting a vision. And just in reading the Word, you, deliverance was happening. And he could see it all happening in a vision. And so I described it as dark getting darker and light getting lighter and so I believe that what's happening is um, more revelations in the word are there it's like the Lord is giving us a little more but what do we have to do we have to read it we have to desire it we have to ask we have to put our foot out and so it's there. The treasure's in the field. You know? Everything's there. But will we uh, sell everything and buy it and go after it? So um, I just thought that was really, really awesome. And uh, so I want to encourage all of you along the same lines. Um, I told him I want to proclaim this from the rooftops because it's so exciting. Um, you no, know, I really do believe that there is more, like veils are being lifted. And uh, there's more power for us to walk into if we would only enter in, press in more. And uh, step out, step out, exercise the faith. Um, so, do it. <laughs> um it's so easy to get so caught up and busy and stuff that we don't um, really make a dedicated schedule of reading the word, of praying and such. So uh, make it happen. If you got a daily planner, you know, I, I put little uh, alarms and stuff on my computer. Uh, to blare at me, to remind me of things, so do it. And um, 
don't go looking around because everybody hears God. Everybody's at different levels. Everybody hears God differently. And though we are to desire the greater gifts, uh, the enemy can trap us if he can get us to feel like we're missing out, God's holding back, or somebody's got something better than me. You know, you can see there's pride, there's jealousy, there's little things that can kind of sneak, try to sneak in there. But instead, just rejoice in wherever you are, however however much you hear him. Maybe you only have spiritual dreams. Um, you know, and some people do hear an audible voice of God. Uh, and that isn't the same with everybody. Um, you know, in the scriptures it says, Blessed are they that, that believe that haven't seen. <laughs> so I'm always, you know, like if, if I ever feel like the enemy is trying to attack me, and saying that I'm not enough or I'm not hearing God enough or whatever. Boy, I use that. I use that against them. And I, I'm like, I'm just fine. I am just fine. I am blessed. And I, I know. So, um, we just keep multiplying the talents. Keep asking. Uh, keep entering in more and more. So, um it's awesome <laughs> okay uh, Dylan uh, is doing a he, he is feeling a burden that he should pray for me and the Saturday live web shows so that I won't be discouraged <laughs> what did you just know that I was gonna have problems <laughs> Now, he, he, he wrote this a few hours ago, so uh, he's just tapping into Father God. So thank you for that prayer because, yeah, today it was a little discouraging um, to, to try and get this thing rolling. Uh, I set everything up before I left, and then when I get running in the door late and thinking I can just push a button and go, suddenly nothing's working. So... Amen. Praise God for that. Well, praise God. Uh, he's been getting a lot of A's on his homework in school. So he he's just wanting to have that focus and just to keep doing really good on his grades on all of his homework. So, yeah, we'll pray for that. Anybody else that's uh, in schools or any kind of... Uh, you know, going back to school for for job furtherment or or whatever. Uh, teachers that have to go back and take all these classes you're supposed to take. Whoever you are, we'll just pray God's best over you. That you indeed do have the mind of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For your hand of blessing upon their minds. That they would be like sponges. And it not be a labored thing. But that it come easily. And I do pray also for for my son. Uh, who has gotten backed up on homework a little bit here lately. For your hedge of protection around his mind. As well, Lord Jesus. That the focus will be clear. The thoughts will maybe be able to be taken captive. Place that beneath the footstool of Jesus Christ and release freedom. Freedom of thought. And focus in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for excellence. Thank you that your children, your creation, is excellent. Thank you, Jesus. Kamisha uh, wrote me a note on uh, on my live prayer um, thing I post on YouTube that she needs to receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's a little different. 
Brabek yera bakapa kora pakasi kere pake. Viberish pni pakara pake yera pakara pasune pake yera pakara pravish kere pake. Brabek yera pake pake yera pakasi kere pake. Lord Jesus, I just put Kamisha before you. Brabek yera pake yera pake. And just agree with me, Kisha. Kamisha. Brabek yera pake para sikere pake. Bromba kena bakara pake para pake. That Jesus died for me, he rose again for me, that I'm a sinner, but I am promised salvation all through Jesus Christ, that I can't do it anymore, and that I deliver myself over. Ba 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 shikinabaka to Jesus. Brebekinabaka. I offer my life over to Jesus. I declare that you are the Christ. You are the Christ. And I ask, I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would baptize me in your most Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for washing my sins away. And I thank you that you promise power. Because I submit myself to you. I give my life to you, Lord Jesus. I desire to be holy as you are holy, Lord Jesus. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would grow us in your purity, in your love, and in your truth. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would bless Kamisha with the evidence of your most holy and powerful spirit, who is this day welcomed in within her. Through the speaking of tongues. And just like in that video, Kamisha. See, this is even more awesome in, receive, in receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can just begin to praise and worship the Lord and thank Him over and over and over again for what He's done. Really thinking about it. Thinking about what He did on the cross. And all the promises may it all come full circle. The true revelation of it all. And so out of that welling up Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you and praise you, Jesus. If your tongue and if your lips begin to feel a little funny, just keep going. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. And as the, the tongue, your spiritual language comes, just keep rolling with it. And it just takes surrender. Because it is uncomfortable and it is new. And uh, sometimes it takes a lot of, you know, mindsets and things that you've heard outside of yourself, judgments other people have made to just command them down by that new power and authority that you have. And declare, I have all that Jesus has for me. His Spirit is dwelling within me. He is welcome here. But I'm a slave for the Lord Jesus Christ. But in my carnal flesh, I place at the, the feet of Jesus. And I exalt His Spirit to grow within. To bubble up. 
So, Lord Jesus, we just also pray for, uh, continue to pray for direction for Kamisha, that you would show him, her her talents, her giftings. You would show her the value that she has in your kingdom. That you would fill her with joy and peace. And she knows that she needs this. She knows that she needs it. And you have the words of eternal life. So dig into the word, Kamisha. Dig into the word. Dig in. Amen. Jason, a regular here uh, on our little bit of prayer, uh, was so awesome. Um, he he wanted to uh, make a donation, and um, and I I said to him, you know, what my real need is right now because the Lord is really. Um, Put a burning on in me to uh, do a forum. Uh, you know, it's been for a long time, and you know, I've tried and I've tried, and some of it, I I wonder if it was just the Lord's timing. Um, but guess what? The timing is now. <laughs> it's finally now um, because I got even more confirmations and whatever. And when I tried to to work on it. Um, it wasn't coming easy. Uh, I was like hitting a wall or whatever. And when I was, you know, I was praying and whatever, and then I started getting this song by Swing Out Sister called Breakout. And if you look at the lyrics of that, it's just like, plow ahead, you know. Um, you got to do what you got to do to say what you're going to say. Break out, you know, that that kind of stuff. You know, not not perfect lyrics there, but um, very exciting. So when I got that song in my head and then uh, Jason had offered, oh, I want to give you some money. And I said, well, more so than money, I really just need help. Could you help me with this forum? And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> You know, I'd rather give you the money. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, he he uh, he said yes, and he helped. And basically, by some of the things that he did, it actually, I, I looked at what he did, and I was able to pick it up and learn. So praise God, I know what I'm doing now. Um, and he just wrote, and he said, I think you should start advertising the forums now. Well, I'd like to, but there's I need to populate some more stuff in there um, first. But yes, the forum is pretty much up and ready to roll. Um, praise God uh, for those of you that have been praying about this. Um, now it's going to be a reality. Um, let me see if I can um, give you a little teaser on some of the topics and whatnot. I will uh, tell you some of the uh, headings um, and why this forum thing is is kind of a big deal. Um, I will just read from uh, kind of like the beginning of, of what what all the Lord was showing me and it's it's been a little a little while um, but you know doing ministry stuff and I got people coming to me or whatever and you start to notice there there's like a lot of people out there that feel kind of like a displacement and it's hard because the world is so anti supernatural and you know, within the church circuit, it's kind of like doing potlucks and not really going deeper, you know, um, because my heart is, you know, I want to do the things Jesus did. You know, it's promised even greater things than those. So it's like, it's like hungry, hungry hippo. I want more. I want more. Um, so to be surrounded by other people like that, 
wow, you know, isn't that a novel idea? So that's kind of important. Um, you know, and I'm not really pro a subculture. Um, you know, like, you know, it's just it, so many are not wanting to give all, to really give all. Adversity comes and people shy away from deliverance, from healing, uh, you know, faith, all those things. People just, they try, but they don't keep plowing on, even when it seems like there's failure or whatever. Um, I want to be with people that say, no, this is what the Word says. I'm going to keep going. It, there's no shame. There's no shame that nothing happened this time. I'm going to keep going, you know? So that's kind of an exciting thing. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like uh, we're going back to meeting underground, <laughs> you know? But anyhow, um, uh, the name of, uh, of the forum is going to be called Ironsmiths. And it's, it's called that because I had a really vivid dream and it had all these very unique symbols and it was very dramatic and just like burned in my mind and part of the dream actually had a blacksmith shop in it and I remember um, you know like a shelter house it looked just like a shelter house like if you go to a park and it was that reason it was that way for a reason so that I would when I describe it, I would say shelter house, shelter. So that's the way the Lord gave me the symbolism. And so this whole blacksmith shop, it's because it is as a shelter. And so I continue to, you know, dig through because there's so much in every little detail. Um, as I began to explore the whole blacksmith thing, uh, the term smith actually originates from the word smite, which means to hit. Thus, a blacksmith is a person who smites black metal. And so when I, when I, when I um, formulated that in my mind, I'm like, wow. You know, because it's like, isn't that what spiritual warfare screams? That's what we are up against in these last days. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're, we're fighting, uh, you know, these, these spiritual things by using our authority in Christ Jesus. So, and we're doing that by the hammer of the truth in the Word of God. So, um, another thing that's always been important to me is the scripture in Proverbs eleven fourteen. Where, there is, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So, you know, I have been in a cult, a cult, not a cult, <laughs> in the past. And I, I got to learn so much from, by watching the leader and where the leader went off and and fell and things and it's just like being f afraid of people taking away power or whatever well I don't really care I just want to be with other people that have the same heart and let's build off each other let's grow build 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 what did you learn Ooh, share it share it I want it you know that's the kind of mentality that I have and so I hope there's other of you out there that have that same kind of, um, that yoke of, of wanting Jesus right there above anything else. That same kind of heart and that hunger, um, you know, that, that this kind of forum thing can be. So, um, anyhow, I said I was going to read some of the, um, some of the things that's going to be in the forum. And it is a prayer request. That that's some um, something that 
prayer requests and praise reports, that's where stuff can begin to go. And then like once a week I can filter out and put it all on here. But if you put them there, there can be a whole community of people, the moment you put it up, beginning to pray right then and there. Not just be, <laughs> you know? Um, everybody, everybody um, can join in on this. Uh, prophetic things. Uh, when uh, the Lord gives you things for the body of Christ, how important it is to share that. And what I find so much is, you know, again, because, because I got so many videos up and I help people or whatever, I'll hear something from one person, I'll hear something from another, and the Lord is already speaking in my heart something. And what it is, is I end up going back to each person and saying, oh, that's cool, that's what the Lord's doing right now. The Lord said that to so-and-so and, and this person. And, you know, then I'm able to encourage people, well, you can just do that here on this board. Um, and so everybody can, can confirm it together and uh, be encouraged because we all are pieces to the puzzle. Uh, another thing is prophetic guidance. Um, and I put a little header on there. Pray, therefore, for thee on behalf of the Lord thy God. No, that's not a scripture that I could find, but it sounded good, didn't it? <laughs> Basically, it's the gist of what it's about. Um, every now and then you need like a word from the Lord. Um, you feel stuck or whatever. There is a place for it, and it is highly abused. You know, oh, give me a word, give me a word. Well, I think, I think everybody will reserve themselves and not be like... A, as I put it, a, a drowning person. We're not going to support that kind of mentality. Uh, we each have our responsibility in the Lord. Um, but anyhow, in an environment like this, where if somebody gets a word from the Lord, shares it, somebody else does, somebody else does, you get more people. And, uh, you know, we're, we're two or th three or more gathered, that kind of mentality. Because it it really isn't so healthy uh, to get something from one person, go off into the corner, and then make it the gospel truth. Uh, no, it's we, we all need to work together. And then if you give something, you have to encourage the person in discernment because one thing for one person might mean something else to another. So I, that's the same thing with dreams and whatnot. I always encourage people. Um, there are some symbols that seem to repeat, but it doesn't, it's not the gospel truth. It's not the law, you know, like me, I saw that shelter house. You might see it as a shack, you know, you might say that isn't anything protective. That's a dumb little shack. But because I would interpret it as calling it a shelter house, I knew that that's what it meant. So, um, that's the next category, dreams. Um, if you need help with dreams and visions, if you get something, um, you're really not sure, um, share it. And then uh, we'll try to get together some dream interpretation resources and uh, suggestive things that uh, can get you rolling into... Um, you know, learning how to walk, begin to walk in interpretation. Because if you're dreaming dreams and you're, you don't do anything with them, uh, how are you going to grow, you know? If he gives you anything, you should really meditate on it, pray on it, uh, seek it out. Because if you don't, um, you'll lose even that which you're given, right? So he wants us on fire. So, um, that with dreams as well. Um, obviously, teaching stuff that's solid, that's, um, you know, and resources, different uh, kind of guides. And, of course, I'll put in a Bible Promise series that's, that's really good, um, that sort of thing. And then, a nice area for community. And this... This is something, you know, 
it's such a blessing um, to be able to share, um, to joke around, uh, to just um, be with other believers that are the same level of desire and love with the Lord, but also just to have some fellowship because it is hard. And, you know, some of you might not be going to a four-walled church box. <laughs> um, so, you know, maybe the fellowship thing, you know, you're missing uh, some of that. So this is an opportunity to to get back in there. And then, of course, you know, spiritual subject. Um, I call it a church chat, <laughs> a spiritual chit-chat kind of time. So that, too. Um, uh, and then I wanted uh, the last category I was thinking of is a back to the basics. And, um, you know, it's somewhat inclined towards uh, the prepper mentality, but I only put it on there because... Um, you know, there's wisdom in the scriptures. We know that famine is coming. And, uh, you know, many people have dreams about it and and whatnot. And there's, you know, you can prep your brain out and totally not have God in the picture. Um, and we don't want to do that, okay? And, and that's such a turnoff sometimes, like, if you're looking at stuff and here they don't even care about God or anything they're they're just anti-government and anti this and anti that and and they're just prepping so this is kind of like an area where we can look at what what the word says we know famines coming and whatnot and just ways that we can you know live responsibly and be prepared um, in a common sense kind of way with what we know from the word so um, that's kind of uh, what what's going on with the forum and so I'm excited um, I also got another confirmation this week um, someone uh, I happened to watch a video and in it they were just talking about man I I really just want a, like a place to be with other believers and like a community or something and I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> So I said, I'm working on it. Oh my gosh, exciting. So, um, anyhow, uh, praise God. Just, um, I just ask for your prayers on, on finishing that up. And uh, by next week, I should be able to be advertising it. So, uh, we can see what the Lord will do with it. Exciting. Yeah, isn't that special? Yeah, you know, I named that one church chat just for you, James. <laughs> I thank and praise you, Jesus. I thank and praise you, Jesus. I thank and praise you, Jesus, for my brother, James, that you would manifest that new brain to him that you would give him the strength that he needs throughout this week Lord Jesus you say that there is power in the prayer of the saints and we cling to that Lord Jesus just like the, the widow asking for that judgment on her behalf we will continue to pray for James and for the full manifestation of his healing. Thank and praise you, Jesus. I thank and praise you for life, abundant life. I bind up loss in the mighty name of Jesus. Command that which would try and rob, would try to kill, steal, and destroy that abundant life. Bro, I bind you, I command you to go beneath the footstool of judgment by the name of Jesus. Bro, I speak life, power, strength, and a sound mind into James in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I thank you, Lord Jesus, as the seasons are changing, that you are readying us for this new season. That you are calling us into your word. And as we go into your word, we receive that manifestation of your power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We do, we do pray. As last week, as you recall, we prayed for faith. Nick asked for greater faith, and we do ask for more of it. Because that is tied in. That is tied in to this season. Lord Jesus, Lord of the harvest, we do beseech you to lay your hand upon us and anoint us with greater faith. Enlarge our territory, Lord Jesus. Enlarge your uh, power within us, Lord Jesus. To believe for greater things and to move in your power. Indeed, Jesus, more of you and less of us. May you increase. May you increase, Lord Jesus. And may our carnal man decrease. We declare this in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go! <laughs> okay. God bless you guys. And I will see you next week.